Mr. Chairman, several years ago, before many of us joined the board, President Ryan established a committee called the Naming and Memorials Committee. The preamble to this committee charges states, as a public university, we have a responsibility to interpret the university's story for current and future generations, to give it context and meaning. Such work is entirely consonant with our mission as a community dedicated to education to prepare students for citizenship and to advance the common good by helping the public know and understand what our history is and why it matters. I am in 100% agreement with this mission. This committee has studied the renaming issue for years and offered only one recommendation to President Ryan. I find it unfortunate that after years of study and efforts to contextualize the university's history, the committee failed to recommend a diverse and inclusive slate of candidates for renaming. If we are going to rename the library, and it appears we're heading in that direction, I think the board should have the opportunity to consider naming the library after a woman or a person of color from among the university's distinguished alumni base, or perhaps even a noteworthy Virginian who is not an alumnus of this university. But the bigger issue for me, however, is that this vote is yet another sad reminder of the graceless world in which we live. I find it amazing that people can be so confident in their own rectitude. All of the time and energy spent on this issue is an unfortunate reminder that we live in an unforgiving culture where literally anything goes, but no one is forgiven. Renaming buildings is a discouraging reflection of our culture, a culture that is no friend to grace. Amid all the rancor, unrest, and uncertainty in our world today, I find it deeply disappointing that the Naming and Memorials Committee expended so much effort looking backward in time, examining the character flaws of past leaders, and in the end, rendering its superior judgment on historical figures they deem too compromised or too flawed. Left unchecked, many fear this committee will continue down this path and leave no stone unturned. And that is what has people of goodwill asking the same question in total exasperation. When will this end? We are locked in a destructive culture war over our shared history, what to remember, how to remember it, and how to interpret it. This is where we need educational institutions the most. I would like to see this university devote its resources to building bridges across the issues that divide us, rather than searching through stacks in the library to find human imperfections of past leaders for the sole purpose of condemning those who did not and cannot meet unforgiving and impossible standards. We can never contextualize history or rectify the unpleasant parts of the university's past by renaming buildings. I truly hope that we all agree that when we look into our past, we should do so with humility rather than sanctimony. We should look into our complex history to learn to imitate the virtues of past <laughs> leaders courage, justice, forgiveness, temperance, and generosity, 
while avoiding their vices. I am honored and proud to serve on this board. This is an amazing university with many virtues and blessings, but serious flaws are also part of its history. Of course, we should denounce racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, and every other shortcoming as everyone on this board has done. And we should aim always to do better as we live out the gospel of grace in our role as leaders. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.